Since the 1950s, the neighborhoods along Upper 16th Street and Northwest Washington have been known for its residents who were mostly African-American professionals. During its peak from the 1960s to the 1990s, this collection of communities stood out for its large number of lawyers, dentists, physicians, professors, diplomats, elected officials, government heads, and business people. While breaking barriers for others and themselves in the last half of the 20th century, the residents of Upper 16th Street provided comfortable lives and futures for their families. This oral history collection presents a very small sample of the thousands that made up Upper 16th Street. We just uh, needed a larger house. My grandmother, my mother's mother uh, moved in with us and we uh, needed more space. But it was a nice place. I liked the house. It was much bigger than we, <laughs> where we lived before. It seemed like a huge house really for, in comparison to where we uh, had lived in Brookland. Um, and as time went on, I thought it was special from the standpoint that uh, it was close to the park, convenient to 16th Street, bus line, bus line on 14th Street. And in the um, fall, it, Piney Branch Road was like our own little uh, country lane. And uh, at that time in the 50s and 60s, maybe even until the 70s, I'm not sure, there were grocery stores nearby, a grocery store, a Safeway on 14th Street, Safeway up at Colorado Avenue. So uh, things were fairly convenient, close, and uh, I just thought it was a lovely place to live, and still do. <laughs> I'm originally from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and my husband is from Philadelphia. We liked the houses in Shepherd Park, but we were really impressed with the community and sense of community that we have always experienced when living here. And when we moved here, the neighbors were very welcoming and the environment was very, very nice. Uh, when I was about two years old, we moved uh, to 13th and Kearney Streets Northeast. And uh, we stayed there until um, about 1958, uh, which time we moved over to the 1600 block of Crittenden Street Northwest. <laughs> it was it was interesting. Uh, I went away to to camp, um, um, and when I came back from camp after two weeks, I guess it was, we weren't at our house anymore. They had moved while I was away, so <laughs> I had no idea what was what was coming up until I got to the new house. Um, we. Um when we came back, we, we, uh, we didn't know exactly where we wanted to live, and Washington was changing, so. Looked around for housing, and we weren't sure exactly where we wanted to live. And my husband really wanted to stay in, he liked the townhouse kind of, townhouse. Tiber Island and all those people were going up and in that area. I wanted a more traditional house with a yard and stuff. So that was why we decided we would move to the North Portland Estates area instead of uh, Southwest. But it was a big decision. We had almost put a down payment on a house in Southwest. And then my, my daughter went out, ran out into the fountain. We had fountains down there, big fountain out there. And she almost drowned in the fountain. I said, uh-uh, we're not living that. We're going to go someplace where I can have a fence where I could put my <laughs> three-year-old <laughs> in, in a yard with a fence. So actually, that was, was one of the th reasons we, we uh, made a decision to, move, to buy in Northwest rather than Southwest. Okay. I was quite busy at the time, uh, getting established back in the practice of surgery. Uh, my w wife always stayed busy was volunteer. She integrated the church. Uh, she was a, I, I started to say died in the war, Methodist. But anyway, her church at Asbury was too far to go. 
and Hamline United Methodist Church was that just down the street. And she said in the spirit of religious neighborless, she and the children just walked down to the uh, church two blocks. I guess they were five or six years old. They were too young to be uh, crossing the street by themselves. So she took them to church and Sunday school. They were well received. We had a wonderful relationship with Haviland United Methodist Church up until we moved. And the people who didn't want us there left. Yeah. And one of them went over to uh, Metropolitan Mel Memorial Church uh, across the park and he was a judge and I thought that that was very strange that he would leave his church because we were joining. The minister could not have been more welcoming and the Sunday school uh, was led by the wife of the principal of Coolidge High School and those ladies worked with my little children. I, we had twins in the first grade and my younger son was a year and a half younger and they joined the Boy Scouts. My husband, when he came back from the Navy, became a member of the board. It was a very enlightening, uh, rewarding experience. Stroller, and I saw that someone had stolen my son's bicycle. I had the stroller and I rode up to every door on, in that neighborhood. And I really blew up the incident. I said, do you realize that things are being stolen in this neighborhood and we have no one to report it to other than the police and they have done nothing about it. I said, but then somebody down the alley, and that was a family that had lived there for years, uh, reported that they had a refrigerator in the garage and during that same week, someone had taken food out of the refrigerator. So I had a lot to go with. So I said, we have to organize. We are in the midst of a crime wave, <laughs> a, a crime wave. And um, they became very concerned because that neighborhood, they, they really didn't socialize, talk to each other. So they just figured that, you know, everything was fine. So I talked to the minister of the church and asked if I could get, um, if we could use a room there to hold a meeting of the uh, neighborhood. He fortunately was very interested in getting the neighborhood involved in that church. And um, so we had our first meeting. His wife prepared, she baked the cake and made punch and I brought some things and the people came. And we started talking about what we found we should do to change in that neighborhood. And the bicycle stealing was the catalyst for that. I founded the organization because I felt that I was using the fact that there were thefts in the neighborhood and nobody was talking to each other about it as a reason to pull the neighbors together so that we could work on larger problems. I found larger problems in that community the longer I lived in there. I felt that we could do something to prohibit those problems be from becoming big problems. We went to Carter Barron every now and then. Uh, more often, we would go just this side of the fence and listen to the shows, so we wouldn't have to pay to go in and uh, you know sit in the in the in the chairs. Uh, so that was an experience of, of sort of laying out on the hill on Colorado Avenue, uh, outside of the fence, and uh, you know enjoying whatever show was going on. We'd play and maybe play in the afternoon and go home for dinner and then maybe play again in the evening. Or um, we would go to movies a lot. We went to um, uh, what I would consider neighborhood movies. Now the colony, which was at 60, no, 
uh, Georgia and what Decatur around Something Georgia. Like I guess that would be considered a neighborhood uh, uh, movie theater. We would go down on 14th Street a lot to the Tivoli. There was a place called the Savoy, a, a few blocks south of that. We would go there. Uh, we would uh, maybe go to the Sheridan up on Georgia Avenue or to the Kennedy, which was on Kennedy Street. It, it never was a small town neighborhood like I grew up in. It's a pretty Everyone has uh, the uh, designated space and time, and people are busy. The children were more neighborly than the adults. Not, not I think, uh, out of any prejudice. It's just that it, it was a neighborhood of uh, busy people, and I think it's typical of what you expect in big city neighborhoods anymore. My daughter grew up with a cohort of good friends who also went to Shepherd School. They also went to Hardy, and she went to Banneker. Many of them went to Wilson. But I would say she had a very, very good experience growing up here and was always delighted to have a cohort of very good friends with whom she not only played, but she shared a lot of activities with. I would say three of them had careers in the federal government. They retired. One is an accountant, and one individual had his own business uh, as a jeweler. I forgot so one neighbor is a dentist, and one is a physician. So, and I guess I have to include the president of Howard University. There were a number of physicians, uh, educators, both on the um, public school and, and uh, university level. Um, they called dentists, real estate agents, uh, clergy. Um, mostly professional uh, folks lived in that area. Uh, diagonally across the street from me, there's an embassy. Uh, there's another one behind us uh, also. Uh, on occasion, uh, years ago, we would go, would be invited over to the embassy of Niger, uh, Niger, the French say, but we call it Niger. Uh, they, they, they were, they were professionals or semi-professionals. They were, either, I know the the least, least were uh, physicians. Then we had dent a dentist on the street. We had attorney on the street. We had. Uh, teachers, and I thought it was a great area for our kids to grow up in because the kids were going to either the Shepherd School, which was nearby, or they were going to private schools, and we were sharing bus transportations and stuff, getting the kids back and forth to schools. Mm -hmm. well, my parents uh, were in a great number of organizations. Um, both on leadership and rank-and-file um, levels. And that was just a part of, of our society at that time. Folks went out and they did whatever they, they could for the, the, the greater good. Primarily, I would say the you know, civil rights and education were what most of the folks were um, working toward. Well, going further back than that, um, my grandmother was active in the uh, Scottsboro Boys uh, Defense Fund. Um, she was active in um, the Marian Anderson concert at uh, Lincoln Memorial. Um, uh, parents, uh, my father was the president of the Urban League, Washington Urban League. Uh, my mother was uh, a co-chair of the National Conference of Christians and Jews. I mean, there, there are all kinds of organizations, and I, I remember my father not being home most evenings because he was out um, at different meetings, and which were all, you know, volunteer. Um, my mother, um, uh, you know, similar. So it, it was just what, what folks did, and it was sort of expected of you to do that. I think Shepherd Park has been a neighborhood of individuals who've always been very community-oriented, and not just concerned about the improvement of their community, a number of individuals have started community-based organizations. One of my neighbors has a very vibrant 
organization that serves the dental needs of the wider community. The other individual I know, he's very busy around tax time because he does a lot of free services for seniors. That are of course the fraternities, sororities, the community-based organization, and of course Neighbors Incorporated and the Shepherd Park Citizens Association, which have extensive networks and activities that I think have a positive impact on the city. Um, our father, um, who started teaching um, African history at Howard University in 1922, at a time when most people didn't know anything about Africa or did not want to know anything about Africa or the only thing they knew about Africa they got from the movies, you know, Tarzan movies or um, the savages and the cannibals and the safaris and so on. So um, he taught um, for, well, from 1922 to 1959 when he retired. His courses in the history department were very popular and probably most of the people who went into the field of Africa, African studies, African history, uh, diplomacy, perhaps um, uh, journalism, uh, were influenced by my father, our father. And recently we were doing some more research on our father uh, about the influence that he had on some of the African students. And he had um, uh, either taught or influenced or been in contact with a number of these students before they became heads of state or um, before they led the independence movements in their respective uh, countries. Well, I, I, I uh, did uh, Boys and Girls Clubs of America. And I served on their board, and I had and I had the opportunity to try to get m raise funds for, for those kinds of things. We were always the church groups were always doing something for the poor. We were we, with drives, you know, to take to to collect funds, especially at holidays, Christmas and and and, and Thanksgiving. I I was on a couple of the boards appointed by the mayor, so I had volunteer time for the anatomical review board for the district and I served on that and then I served on the board at DC General Hospital. Because when we had um, students, we sent students to Mississippi when I was in the deanship, we sent students to Mississippi to help uh, with the oral health care uh, in, uh, the, in the uh, blighted areas there and also we sent uh, students to um, Africa uh, and uh, the Caribbean area to help but uh, it was, it was uh, service uh, related to things that you could do in the position that you were in rather than just neighborhood because the neighborhood people were doing their own uh, things and and as they saw the need mm -hmm. the, one of my most exciting trips was uh, when I had an opportunity to go to Africa to meet the the deans of the dental schools across the continent and they had never met each other or seen each other and they didn't know what we had to offer them and and I was saying, well, you know, we, I can't tell you what to do, but I can tell you what we do and what works. And we have an association and we share information and we share, we, we, uh, we have teach, uh, faculty exchanges and we, have, we raise funds for student scholarships and aid. And I said, and those are the kinds of things that I can share with you. Uh, they, were, they were amazed and astounded. And since then, we have helped them to form a, an association for, for faculty across the continent and brought them into our international activities. So I think that I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased that we were, I was the first one that was able to go and talk and they were amazed that it was a woman that was coming from the U.S. to talk. It was a, it was a great time. So I, I had a very busy life outside of being, <laughs> running a minority institution and striving for excellence.